Hello there, my fellow alien hunters, and welcome to another episode of lore dedicated to the chamber militant of the Ordo Xenos. In today's Death Watch video, I decided to start a series within a series, if you will. It will focus on the specialist ranks from within the Death Watch. I do realize I've already covered some Space Marine specialists, like apothecaries, tech marines, or librarians, but the ones who also serve in the Death Watch do have some special and unique lore associated with them. That, and there's also a couple of specialists that are only found in the Death Watch. That being said, I've decided to start this with some lore about the Death Watch Watch Captain. Yes, I do realize it sounds a bit silly, but be warned because I'll be saying that a lot. Death Watch Watch Captain. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn about the Watch Captains, shall we? A Death Watch Watch Captain is a veteran Space Marine officer of, you guessed it, the Death Watch, who commands an entire company's worth of kill teams. These charismatic heroes must be able to win the confidence and respect of their battle brothers in both triumph and adversity. A company of Death Watch Space Marines can defeat seemingly insurmountable odds under their Watch Captain's command. The individual prowess of their battle brothers magnified a hundredfold when coordinated by the ferocious tactical acumen of their leader. Where the Watchmasters are the masterminds of their order, Watch Captains are the fiery sword. These heroes of the Imperium lead the Death Watch into the thick of the fighting. They bind their kill teams together into small armies of black-clad killers, whose only mission is the systematic annihilation of the enemy force. Each Watch Captain is given jurisdiction over several kill teams, including their vehicles and the Battle Brothers who attend them. It is the captain's duty to learn and understand the personalities and motivations of the space marines under his vigil. After all, every kill team has an array of radically different individuals, hailing from all over the galaxy. Without a guiding hand, the resultant clash of culture and ideology could become a liability. But with the guidance of a born leader, every team is forged into a weapon far greater than the sum of its parts. No warrior reaches such esteemed heights overnight. First, he must prove himself in a dozen theaters of war. Many watch captains were once in command of a space marine company. Among their number are wolf lords from the space wolves, Khans from the white scars, iron fathers from the iron hands, and luminaries from a hundred different chapters. Some are promoted from within the Death Watch, their conduct so exemplary that they attain this rank within the chapter. Regardless of their history, they think of nothing else except for how to slay those forces that threaten the Imperium. They do so not only by launching pinpoint strikes, but also by conducting the resultant battles themselves. Armed with an array of specialized war gear, at close quarters they can fell the strongest Xenos Goliaths. The Watch Captains of the Death Watch have seen horrors without number and still remain stoically defiant. Adeptus Astartes' company captains are superb leaders, with a depth of experience only surpassed by the chapter master himself. A chapter's captains are inducted into the greatest secrets and mysteries of their order, with the most binding and terrible oaths, and when it is time for a new chapter master to be chosen, he will likely be elevated from among the ranks of the chapter's captains. When the time comes and they are nominated to be seconded to the Death Watch, these captains dutifully set aside their own desire to remain with their company and chapter and undertake the vigil with humility. The Death Watch traditionally extends the rank of captain to a Space Marine Company commander during his vigil, but most captains entering the Death Watch refuse to accept such a lofty position until they have earned it. Thus, the scarred hero of a thousand battles will accept a role in a kill team as a simple battle brother, under the command of an individual who can be several centuries his junior. There is wisdom, though, behind such an approach for a Death Watch captain must learn how to fight a new kind of war, 
a shadow war against opponents on a dozen fronts where a single kill team must make a difference. The methods, tactics and targets of the Death Watch are best learned in the field, and a Space Marine captain will stand side by side with his battle brothers to learn their way of battle, before even presuming to take command of them. Watch captains are also raised from battle brothers who have served in the ranks of the kill teams with great distinction and undertaken many vigils in the long watch. A particularly skilled Xenos hunter may be called to duty to the Death Watch repeatedly. Eventually such a renowned battle brother may be afforded the honor of assuming the rank of watch captain and lead the kill teams alongside which he had fought for so long. Indeed, such is the unique position of the Death Watch that there are multiple well-documented situations of specialist space marines such as librarians or apothecaries promoted to the rank of Watch Captain. This is a thing which is nigh unheard of in regular Adeptus Astartes chapters. Ultimately, the burden of command falls upon the shoulders of the Battle Brother who is judged to be the most apt to bear it by both his peers and superiors, regardless of his former chapter and role. A watch captain has to be a remarkable individual. He must be a scholarly adept of the teachings of the Codex Astartes and show himself to be an astute tactician through the maelstrom of uncounted battles. He must also be a diplomat and act as a representative of the chapter to imperial authority. The hammer blow delivered by a space marine company can devastate a battle zone or strike with pinpoint accuracy, and this decision is also the responsibility of the captain. Collateral damage may be inevitable, or sometimes even desirable, and civilian casualties will often be unavoidable. Space marines will never hesitate to sacrifice themselves in the cause of victory, but it falls to the captain to make the decision of when and where such sacrifices can be made. It often takes a resolute and ruthless commander to command a space marine company in battle. The unflinching zeal of the battle brothers is one of their greatest weapons and must be exploited to the fullest. As the enemy tires, space marines must relentlessly attack with redoubled fury. Foes in retreat must be mercilessly crushed and put to flight before they can regroup, their strong points eliminated, their defenses bypassed. A space marine captain will seize the initiative and keep it, orchestrating a rising crescendo of mayhem that shatters the enemy force into bewildered fragments fleeing from the battlefield. A space marine captain can earn great glory for himself and the company entering the annals of the chapter's history as a celebrated hero. A captain always leads from the front, his words and deeds an inspiration for the mighty warriors at his command. Their individual prowess with blade and bolter is peerless, as it must be to command the respect of the space marines in their charge. Captains are often lionized by their battle brothers in the company and forge an unshakable mutual bond of loyalty and trust across decades of war. The demand of a Death Watch captain are very different to those found in Space Marine chapters. A Death Watch captain is usually placed in charge of multiple kill teams, and given guidance on broad objectives by the Watch commander. Beyond that, and advice from chaplains and librarians, the Watch captain sets his own missions and organizes his own kill teams appropriately. He is responsible for every detail of their recruitment, training, war gear, and deployment. It is also their solemn duty to record their deeds in battle, and, where possible, to return the remains of a fallen brother to their parent chapter with all due honor. It is unlikely that a Watch Captain will ever have a full 100 Battle Brothers to command in the Death Watch. This is because the handful of space marines available will always be widely scattered across a vast area under the scrutiny of a single watch fortress. Instead, the watch captain must learn how to best employ a changing roster of battle brothers from different chapters to assemble the most effective kill teams for the required mission. Much of the watch captain's time is occupied by endless analysis of data and closed consultations with librarians and inquisitors in an attempt to determine when and where to intervene. 
it is rare to have the luxury of planning an actual campaign in the long watch. All too often, the watch captain is engaged in a long-term triage against a series of alien threats across an entire sector. Precision strikes by kill teams to keep the enemy off balance, often in collusion with the efforts of the Ordo Xenos Inquisitors, and some subtle prodding of Imperial military might in the right direction, is usually the best which can be achieved. A watch captain will often take personal command of important missions, particularly ones that involve multiple kill teams or diverse objectives. A watch captain makes for a truly deadly opponent, but one armed with the ancient weaponry and forbidden war gear available only to the Death Watch is more terrible still. Under his deft control, the most diverse kill teams work together with the smooth efficiency of a well-oiled bolter. Unconquerable fortresses and indestructible war machines are the meat and drink to the fertile mind of a watch captain. Even the strongest enemy forces are liable to be pulled apart and defeated at the hands of a watch captain's kill teams before they even know they are under attack. When a major threat is identified by a watch captain, his role is to formally warn nearby commanders of the threat. If the Imperial response proves weak or ineffective, it may then fall to the Death Watch to intervene directly and put an end to the matter. The Death Watch has access to weaponry that is the doom of worlds. Where conventional defenses fail, a Watch Captain may have to sorrowfully order the complete destruction of a planet, potentially sacrificing innocent lives in their billions to protect other worlds in peril. It is not unknown for Imperial commanders to beg a Watch Captain to take command of their defenses in the event of an alien invasion, hoping to save their planet from exterminatus. A Watch Captain is a wise choice of Supreme Commander in such times, as their skill and zeal will wring the very best out of even the most lackluster planetary defense force. It is also a pitiless choice as a watch captain will never hesitate in turning a whole world into a charnel house for the invaders, a devastated war zone piled high with countless dead. Destroying the alien is the watch captain's primary objective. Preservation of the world and its people is secondary. Such dreadful power is also a watch captain's greatest peril. A Space Marine stalwart character is a proud and ferocious one, as befits such a mighty warrior. But in these traits, the seeds of damnation can also be sown. Overweening pride can turn to hubris and narcissism. Excessive ferocity can beget to bloodlust and madness. A watch captain can order a whole world burned with a single word, and entire population slaughtered without fear of censure. The temptations to abuse such power, often with the purest of motivation, can be seductive indeed. The belief that the threat of the Xenos must be attacked directly with every weapon available is a form of lurking madness that the Watch Captain must learn to always keep at bay. In truth, the adamantium protecting the flesh of a Death Watch Captain is weak and brittle in comparison to the unbreakable steel to be found in his soul. Some of the standard war gear for a Watch Captain includes Artificer Power Armor, Iron Halo, Bolter or Bolt Pistol, Chainsword, Frag Grenades, and Crack Grenades. Optional War Gear can include Terminator Armor, a Storm Bolter, Combi Weapons in the form of a Combi Flamer, Combi Melta, or Combi Plasma Gun, Close Combat Weapons in the form of Power Swords, Lightning Claws, Plasma Pistols, Storm Shields, Power Fists, Relic Blades, or Thunder Hammers, Melta bombs, digital weapons, and auxiliary grenade launchers. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Watch Captains. If you guys enjoyed this episode, let me know, and I'll also make a video about notable individual captains who serve or served in the Death Watch. Was the video enjoyable or informative? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to help keep the lore videos coming, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. 
I thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.